If you love science fiction movies, then you probably have read about massive colonies of humans living on other planets galaxies away. This idea might seem far-fetched, because we are nowhere near technologically advanced to transform our entire planets, especially the ones that are completely uninhabitable. But there just might be something out there in the vast emptiness of space, which we might be able to call home. Among all the opportunities we might have, there is one that might hold a promising future, in terms of theorizing at least. Let's talk about Titan, the biggest moon of Saturn, and the potential to thrive upon its surface in a distant future. Join us today as we go on a journey through the ether and talk about humanity's next home. First, we need to understand the habitability of our closer neighbors in our solar system, as well as the facts which make them completely inhospitable. Planets like Mercury, for example, offer extreme temperatures up to 430 degrees Celsius and have no atmosphere at all. Due to a lack of atmosphere, the scorching heat during the day escapes from the planet's surface at night, making it devastatingly cold when the sun goes down. The temperature drops down to negative 183 degrees Celsius, far colder than anything ever recorded on Earth. Apart from that, there are little to no resources present on Mercury, which are essential to form a self-sustainable colony. So you can already understand that human life on Mercury is just not possible. In recent years, scientists have thought about our closest neighbor, the red planet Mars, as a second home for humanity. However, those ideas became completely meaningless due to a lack of atmosphere, which will result in extreme cosmic radiation destroying whatever kind of colony we might even think of building. The temperature might not be as harsh as Mercury at negative 60 degrees, but it would still be way too harsh for anyone to survive, let alone thrive. What if I tell you that there might be a better option here? a celestial body with abundant resources to use as well as an atmosphere to shield us from the destruction of cosmic radiations. Welcome to Titan, the biggest moon of Saturn. Let's start by talking about the atmosphere present on Titan. Atmosphere is defined as the layer of gases present above the surface and held by the gravity of the planet. Presence of an atmosphere can contribute to various advantageous conditions which are essential for the survival of any form of life. For example, one of the key roles atmospheric gases contribute to is the protection of life on the surface against harmful cosmic radiation. These radiations can increase the risk of cancer by a tremendous amount, can also cause radiation sickness, and can even cause degenerative conditions in the central nervous system of the human body. Luckily, we might not need to worry about these rays on Titan, Compared to other planets and moons of our solar system, Titan has a very dense atmosphere, much more denser than Earth. On Titan, the majority of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen gas, 95% to be exact. The other 5% is made up of methane. This protective covering of gases, coupled with the magnetosphere of Saturn acts as a shield against intense radiations, especially the galactic cosmic radiations, which would definitely threaten any form of life to survive. Another great factor the atmosphere contributes to is the air pressure present on the surface of this giant moon. The pressure on the surface of Titan is 50% more than that of our blue Earth. This means we would not need any form of pressurized suits in order to explore the surface of our new home. You see, our delicate human bodies are accustomed to the atmospheric pressure present on Earth. Without this pressure, the blood flowing in our body would just rupture the vessels and start oozing out. Now that's a terrible way to go. You see, this atmospheric pressure is necessary to counter the inner pressures of our blood and other fluids. Have you ever seen the experiments where a balloon is put inside a vacuum chamber? As the air pressure outside the balloon is removed, the air inside it pushes hard tremendously, and we can see the balloon expand. In our case, our bodies are not as elastic, and our end would be much more gruesome. Although, we still would need a suit to provide heat because the surface is 180 degrees Celsius and an oxygen respirator, as there is no oxygen in the atmosphere. But that is easily achievable with today's level of technological advancement. It might be difficult to imagine this, but Titan also contains vast seas and rivers, 
It even hosts rain and glaciers as well. But they are not made up of water. Instead, they are completely formed by methane and ethane. Due to the cold temperatures on Titan, methane and ethane are present in liquid form at around negative 179.5 degrees Celsius. Titan contains 100 times more natural gas preserves than we have on Earth. Presence of such a huge amount of fuel would make life on the orange moon much easier than we could expect. It could allow us to power huge facilities in order to gather other resources, drive heavy-duty vehicles to explore the surface, and even operate a majority of equipment to build a more than satisfactory colony. To make it even better, the lack of oxygen in the atmosphere of Titan would make these natural gases inflammable. This would allow the extraction process to be relatively safer than it is on Earth. Lesser amount of oxygen means that they can be much easily converted into fuel, ready to be used by heavy generators to power entire towns in a distant future. Now all of that sounds promising, but there would not be a colony if there isn't any food present for the colonists. Transportation of food from Earth would not be feasible at all, since it is one billion kilometers away from Titan. In order to sustain life for the long term, we must have colonies which can grow their own crops. Fortunately, this problem is solved by our orange new home all by itself. Remember what we talked about the atmosphere and all the nitrogen and methane it contains? Well, all of that can easily be used to form great greenhouses to grow a variety of crops. These specialized greenhouses would contain temperature regulation systems, breathable air for the crops, and would use the vast quantities of nitrogen present as fertilizers. Nitrogen present in the form of ammonia would be absolutely beneficial for cultivation on a massive scale. Methane can be used as a source of carbon for the growth of the crops as well. And the water derived from the underground glaciers would make these greenhouses completely self-sustainable. Once the farming project on the surface of Titan begins to thrive, life on the giant moon would be practically booming. Now I am sure you know that the human body is made up of 75% water. This signifies how important the presence of water would be for us to ensure the survival of the human race on Titan. Well, we're in luck because a massive underground glacier of ice water has been recorded on the orange moon. Although water on Titan is frozen solid at minus 180 degrees Celsius and hard as a rock, it still can be broken down and extracted from the upper hard shell of our new home. This newfound water can be used in a tremendous amount of ways. Not only can it be used for our general day-to-day -day practice, it can be used to grow crops through the practice of hydroponics and make self-sustainable bases on the surface. To list even more advantages of the presence of water, we can even use it to harvest oxygen, another key component necessary for the survival of life. This oxygen can also be released into the atmosphere, making it much more similar to that of Earth. In that distant future, colonists on Titan would not even need an oxygen respirator to survive. Water definitely is the source of life after all. You know what is also absolutely essential for life to grow on Titan? A form of shelter to protect the human colonists on the surface. And for shelter, we need some form of raw materials. Now, we do not have trees or any other form of resources that could be used to form multiple facilities and housing for us as well as our equipment. But we do have something on the giant moon which could easily fulfill the need. Remember we talked about the vast seas and oceans of Titan? Well, they contain massive amounts of hydrocarbons, which can easily be polymerized to form various forms of raw materials. At that point, we would be living in the era of space-age polymerization. We still use hydrocarbon polymer-derived objects on Earth, such as HDPE, which stands for high-density polyethylene. It is primarily used to make pipes and various plastic containers, which are impermeable, can bear different amounts of load, and are recyclable. Other polymers derived from the seas of Titan would make construction very efficient and cost-effective compared to other planets, where transportation of raw materials would be required to form shelters and bases. Apart from this, these hydrocarbon polymers can be used to form other daily use objects like furniture and machine parts, as well as mass production of common day-to-day -day objects. Now you might be wondering how we are going to explore the terrain without the presence of any roads, or how we would cross the huge seas made up of fuel and climb gigantic mountains on Titan. Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. 
we will just simply fly. You see the gravity present on the surface of Titan is 14% of Earth because of its low density and smaller size, meaning flight would be an extremely cost-effective way to get around the rough terrain. To make flight even more easier, the extremely high ratio of atmospheric thickness to the surface gravity can provide our aircrafts much more lift with much shorter wingspans. It can be entirely possible for humans to use small propulsion systems and winged suits to easily travel huge distances. Lower gravity also gives us a form of safety net when it comes to flight as well. Here on Titan, the free fall acceleration is seven times lower than that of Earth. So if a person manages to fall from a high altitude, the impact would be much less severe. However, it could still break a bone or two. Now all of that sounds extremely promising to all you viewers, I'm sure, and I know you might be asking the question that, why aren't the brightest minds of Earth already trying to reach Titan and start a colony? Well, this is because the orange moon is a little more than 1 billion kilometers away, and it would take us over $400 million just to touch down onto it. Building an entire colony, on the other hand, would cost us much, much more than we can imagine. In terms of building a self-sufficient colony, we would need metric tons of raw materials as well as an entire fleet of astronauts who specialize in medicine, engineering, agriculture, to name a few. We also need to take into consideration the Titanic spacecraft our scientist would have to build in order to sustain a flight for decades throughout the emptiness of space with such a large fleet of humans on board. Pulling something off like this would not be considered an ordinary feat, even by the standards of our future relatives. For now, this idea to turn Titan into a home for us, humans will remain just that, an idea, and maybe after decades or at least a century later, we might consider something like this as practical. Thank you for joining us through this magnificent journey.